may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. I hope everybody out there has had a pleasant day. It's been a, not a fun day for me, but we're still here. Now earlier, Lisa was talking about this intercontinental missile that was fired by Russia, which had everybody in the Middle East scared to death. Now don't blame them. They didn't go through the proper channels or anything. They just kind of launched this thing, so everybody was freaking out. <coughs> Excuse me, my arteries are killing me. I can't help it. I can't stop. It says Russia's top pool M intercontinental ballistic missile launch terrorized the Middle East. Moscow shields Iran just before the launch of the attack. Strong message of Iran's protection was sent by Russia just a little while ago with the launch of this ICBM intercontinental ballistic missile, which was visible through the Middle East, causing alarm in several capitals, including Sitcom. The missiles have been passing through the airspace of Syria, Iraq, and Iran, but due to the trajectory, the intercontinental ballistic missile in eastern Kazakhstan it is typical, typical for the international media spoke on the unidentified, uh, unidentified, I'll learn to talk someday, one of these days maybe, which was spotted in Iran airspace and then over the areas of Delaria, Waste, Babi, and Sinjar in northwest Iraq near the border of Syria. Now remember, Russia's got a lot of troops sitting up there on the Golan Heights on top of all this other stuff that's going on added to the million other things. Moscow chose this particular moment a few hours before the attack by Iran to send a message to the U.S. and Israel. Don't react to the upcoming Iranian attack, which is going to happen anyway. Uh, just a little while ago, the situation becomes clear. The Russian Ministry of Defense spokespersons uh, of the successful test launch of the intercontinental ballistic missile in Astrakhan, or whatever you say it, the region, the combat crew of the strategic missile forces successfully launched an intercontinental ballistic missile, a mobile ground launch missile system. The results obtained confirmed the high uh, reliability of the Russian missile, ensuring that the strategic security of the Russian Federation. Russia has reportedly test fired this missile. Uh, and the range of southern uh, region to the back of the test range. Residents of the, I cannot say these places, are posting pictures of videos of rocket strange trajectory in the sky. Anything else we got on this? About all we got on it, but it definitely had everybody, you know, basically running for their bunkers today. You see everybody, change, you know, choosing sides. Now, America is telling Iran, if you attack, we'll come back. We're going to help them attack. Now, Russia is saying, if you attack Iran, then we're going to attack you. It's just one thing after another. Once again, as we're, we've been talking about, there's so much going on right now and so many hot heads that Lucifer's going to and fro, getting all this stuff ready and getting everybody ready to fight with each other. It says here, NATO countries prepare for population for war. All civilians in Lithuania may join military reserves units now, the country defense ministry has announced. Lithuania is establishing permanent military training centers that will be operating nationwide to prepare for personnel to serve in the rear during the war, the defense minister said on Friday. Total of 27 command headquarters that are due to be fully operational next year will be set up in the major cities of NATO member countries in an effort to prepare for the public to send a deterrent signal to the enemy. The Baltic State's Defense Minister expects such a command post to become a link between the Lithuanian Armed Forces and the citizens who can defend the country with arms in the event of war. 
We are talking about the fact that the public will already know where to go and what to contribute to the defense of their homes and country, he said. He further classified and purposed the terrified uh, territorial defense units by saying that they will fight against diverse groups, protest objects, and carry out their tasks. The bill submitted by the Lithuanian parliament uh, says that the, the command centers having units under their command made up by existing reverse troops, riflemen, as well as owners of firearms, including hunters. In other words, it's kind of like what it was back in the Civil War, it kind of sounds like. According to some, 10,600 members of the civilian reserves, around 2,000 riflemen and 800 members of the National Defense Volunteer Forces are expected to join the military as soon as possible. The officials encourage a wider public to enlist, saying that all civilians uh, may join and that everyone will find their place in the units. Now, early this week, Germany sent its first military unit to Lithuania as part of the plan to have full armor brigades permanently stationed in the Baltic state. Under the plan, the 500-strong brigade or 5,000-strong brigade will be stationed less than 20 kilometers from the border of Belarus, which I tell you plays a huge role in all this. A key Russian ally, Lithuania, also borders the Russian enclave of Kilingrad. See, what you do is you have Lithuania and Poland sandwiched right in the Sawalski Gap. And that's something that they are planning to take at any time. That's something else that could go over, go off at any moment now. Moscow perceives the movement of NATO capability, uh, capabilities closer to this border as a provocation and the threat of its national security. So, more and more great news around the world and definitely good for us because the rapture is getting ready to get here. Nuclear war will happen in Europe, Russian TV pundit warns. As nuclear strikes by Russia and European targets are inviolable, a political expert warned in his fiery rant on the Russian state television. We want to change the future of Europe. And says the gentleman, European political scientist Dmitry, said that uh, the politics show, which was the Russian's number one TV channel on Thursday, the warning marks the escalation of war of war, wars between Moscow and Ukraine's Western allies ongoing since Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Uh, you've chosen these morons to lead you. Now we're trying to change the future, which currently means 20, 200 to 250 million dead of uh, dead or maimed European. That's the price of nuclear war, he said. Says, uh, saying the French capital would be targeted in a hypothetical attack and adding America would be fine. A video clip of the speech was shared by Ukrainian International Internal Affairs advisor. And by the way, Americans are fine. They are okay, he said on Thursday. Well, maybe some cloud will reach okay, or maybe it won't, maybe the ocean and so on. But unfortunately, all of our attempts to turn the Europeans' brains are all unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. But I think I should put it, uh, aside our false sensitivity, but there is no European nuclear war. No, there will be, and we have to start it directly. My God. And we should explain, uh, explicitly name the European cities that will be destroyed. And how many casualties there will be after five or six nuclear missiles hit Paris and so on. And went on to suggest a system that threatens European citizens directly, perhaps via mail. For example, I would be following every European should receive a postcard from us in the mailbox. A postcard with, the, with his house, NATO military facility, the place where they will strike and what will be left of their house, he said. And we have to make uh, every European citizen understand that they can die too because for the last 60 years, the European citizens have lived a complete sense of immorality. The remarks of the latest case of the escalated nuclear rhetoric emanating from Russian state media, and they have. They've been every day talking about killing everybody, basically. It's something else to behold. Actually, in my time, you didn't want to even say the nuclear word, but now they bring it out like it's cotton candy. I think you all know what I'm talking about. Russian state TV hosts and pundits regularly issue nuclear warnings to the West, threatening strikes on European and U.S. capitals. 
In September 2023, Igor, another Kremlin uh, propagandist, issued a stark nuclear threat against the West with regards to the war in Ukraine, claiming the U.S. could be the direct danger from Russia's nuclear arsenal. In March of 2024, pro-Russian Ukraine politic, uh, politician Victor, who was ex, uh, exiled, uh, exiled to Russia in 2022 exchange for Ukraine prisoners of war, predicted a nuclear strike that will most likely, most likely be coming to the West, continues to assert its right on global dominance. And I've already told you, God's already shown us that it does happen way before this stuff ever come out. Later the same month, a Russian state TV weatherman uh, told uh, Solovov the weather conditions are ideal for a nuclear strike on member countries. In just two years since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has outfitted numbers of red lines, some of which include the West uh, supplying weapons to Ukraine, Ukraine strikes on Russian soil, and so on and so on. With some neighbor NATO members appearing to show increased willingness to, for some sort of troop deployment in Ukraine, concerns that Russia may expand its war has already risen, fanned by warnings by Russia President Vladimir Putin and his allies. <coughs> so once again, the war talk is on, people. It is on. And it just hasn't it does not seem to stop. It gets worse and worse each and every day. That's why we're on here warning you about this. Let's see. This just came out. It says, Sergey's, here's Russia's plan for Ukraine this city on um, this summer. So from time to time, people ask why Russia is not acting more decisively in Ukraine. Why it appears to be a dragging its feet. Some say it's out of weakness. Some others suspect some secret agreement with the West, and it seems there might be theories to suit all of these. It really, the answer is to clear that the trans, uh, transparent this year is the next. Russia has budgeted about 5 to 6 percent of its GDP on the Ukraine conflict, with Kremlin's task to use these uh, small resources as efficiently as possible. The intention is to achieve the goals of the military operation with a new mobilization. I told you they've been stocking up troops like it's like going out of style, just like in World War II. And no, uh, preserve not only to calm and functioning economy, but also stability inside the country. Although the front line has remained largely st static since autumn of 2022, the political situation and the circumstances in which the conflict will likely end are changing radically in Russia's favor. With little risk at, and small financial, financial expense, President Putin is slowly but surely getting his way. Says no wanting but preparing. There is increasingly talk of the imminent Russian offense as the Ukraine counteroffensive a year ago. Commentators claim that they know exactly where it will take place towards Kharkov or Sunny. Uh, when will it happen? May or June is what they're saying. They're sure. Uh, and are sure in advance that this decision for the whole conflict is on. But it seems that the Kremlin does not want to make a big march on Ukraine's second city this summer. And here's why. Firstly, there is a lot, a lack of experience. We are talking about the operation on a scale of Eastern Front of the Second World War, and such endeavors have been carried out during the current campaign. February 22nd, 2022 doesn't count because the enemy wasn't fully mobilized and the front line didn't really exist. So there's no need to break through anything. If any conflict, the sales, uh, the scale required for an offensive battle is increased steadily. And it is an appropriate tool, strategic and tactical uh, techniques offer uh, officer and staff corps need to be formed. The leap required to go for is live month operation take a rapid or successful occupation of these areas. Also, the focus and means required are yet in place. Yes, we have reserves in about 150,000 to 170,000. Yes, more people are signing up for military service every month that Ukraine is catching in taverns on its streets. I think it's what it says. It's hard for me to read it which means that those numbers are still growing, but a massive soldier, a mass soldier is not an army. You need armed, equipped, trained, 
provided with experienced officers, staff, capacity, equipment, shells, aircraft, and other things. Russia's defense ministry, Sergei Shogov, has said that the formation of two new general armies are completed by the end of 2024, so that the Russian armed forces will only reach their peak from eight to nine months. And then they're coordinating the operating second front should be apparent. Now, I'm telling you, we're reading this, but that is not what the Lord showed us. Now, when this attack comes, it's shortly after the rapture. And what will happen is Belarus, along with Russia, will take Ukraine. They'll take the whole, the, pretty much the whole side that's close to Russia. They'll take it. That is very evident that they will take that area. And they take the capital of Ukraine. So, with all that said, that is when everything goes nuclear. Because everybody will do a counter strike. Now, we don't know, like I said, we don't know who makes the first first hit. We don't know who strikes first. We do know there's going to be a major counter-offensive, and it'll be from Russia and Belarus. Somewhere in that, things go wrong, mighty wrong. Looks like I said, the rapture's already happened. We're gone. Now, I don't know how close it is to this, this situation, but it's close. Probably. Probably right up against it. But when it happens, something, like I said, goes definitely wrong. We're already gone. The world's already hurting because we are gone. And then this thing goes really, really wrong. And a lot of a lot of states and capitals in Europe and I guess America too, which I know America, but I don't know what happens really in Europe. But a lot of these places get hit. So you have the rapture, World War III, and you have what's happening in the Middle East. It's not going to be a fun place if you're left here. Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Past, present, future, he died and was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Now, the more we read to you, the closer you know what we've been telling you for two years is on its way. And we don't have much more time. So get yourself ready. If you're lost out there, listen, I know we. it's like beating, a, you know, beating these drums every day. I know you get tired of hearing it. But it is coming. And we don't want to see anybody left behind, so trust the blood of Jesus. And call upon him today. It don't matter what you've done or what you think you've done. He's ready for you to call out to him. That's why he has us doing this, people, each and every day. He knows we're close to the end, and we're here to remind you of that. That's why we're here. We're here to remind you that the end is nigh. And we don't want to see anybody left behind. As Lisa Boyce says on Watchwoman 65, each day is another day closer to home. These news articles are leading us to the same conclusion. It's all setting up the Antichrist in the last days. That's what all this is, people. The third temple is ready to be rebuilt now. So everything's on course while the rest of the world is still asleep. And they will be all the way up until the, the very time of the rapture they'll still be asleep they won't wake up because they just choose to not want to hear what god is telling them god's gave the world plenty of signs that this is over the earthquakes everywhere all this stuff that's happening it's all there people just ain't seeing it now those that are awake are but the rest is not don't be one of those keep listening for the show far brothers and sisters because we're not too far away Thank you for all those who bought me coffees today and those who bought the super stickers. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for keeping me in your prayers. I've had all kinds of issues, but I'm getting through them slowly but surely. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for being patient with me and being here on the show and supporting the show. The show can't go on without you guys. Okay, bottom line, you guys have made this channel. It's your channel. You all support it. You all keep it going and it's definitely helped a lot of people, including myself, so I appreciate everybody that's had a hand in it. We don't have much time, and we're almost home. So right now is the time for us to be happy and just get people on the ark, because we're very soon going to see all of our loved ones, all of our pets, everything we've ever lost is right there. We can almost touch it. So hang in there. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven.
Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.